Hey everyone, Louis here from the Xano CS team. Today I'm going to go over some of the common data transformations that we typically have to do after importing data from another source to your Xeno database. When we import a table, we don't usually have arrays or objects properly set, and we don't have any relationships created either. So today I'm going to teach you how to make the necessary adjustments to have your database up and running. So here I have a CSV file with information about all the cities in the United States. And we're going to start by importing this data into our table. Just a disclaimer that all the processes that I'm going to be using in this video can be applied for both uh, data imported via CSV or via API. And if you're looking for a video tutorial on how to store the results of API calls into your Zen database, you can find a video here in the card that do teach you how to do that. And the first step here is to create our tables. And one tip here that I give is to match the names of the fields here to the names of the titles in the CSV file. Then that will make our lives much easier down the road. And to import this CSV file, I'm going to be using a function called CSV stream, which is designed to import large CSV files into our database. And my first action here is to add a file resource input that you can find here under storage, file resource. And the first function that I'm going to add to my stack is the CSV stream that you can find here an utility, CSV stream. And the value of this function is going to be the input that I just created. And after that, we're going to loop through the items of this CSV. We're going to add a record a one by one because each item in the CSV is going to be returning as an item named variable. So here in this add record function, you can click here on the magic wand icon and reference item. So that's when it comes in handy to match the names over here because it's already set. If you have different names, you have to manually make the adjustments to match. So let's go ahead and save. And here I just added a conditional to add the first 1000 records because the, we don't want this video to be too long, but this function has virtually no limitations. The limitation in the number of records is basically the capability of the server resources of your subscription plan. So let's upload a file. Good. So let's take a look at our table. If we refresh, and then we have 1000 records. Good. But what we see here is that in the state underscore name field, we have multiple duplicate records that are stored as a text string. So it would be better if we have a separate table and have only the unique values of this column to store there. So I created this states table and the only view here is state name. So let me show you how we can populate that. And the first tab here is to query all the records in the CDs table, but we just don't want all of the records. We were going to apply a filter to the return of this variable. And this filter is going to be the unique filter that you can find here unique. And this value is the path or the field that we want the unique values to return. And we want this column over here, state underscore name. That's why we're assigning here state underscore name, unique. Good. Now I'm going to loop through them and add the record one by one. And as we have only this state name field there, we're going to match item dot state name. So we're going to create a record for each of the items returning from this series list. So let's go ahead and run. Let's go back to our table and here we go. So now we're going to create the table reference with the series table because each CD has a state. So what we're going to do here is to create a table reference with the cities I have already done here. So now I have this states underscore ID, which is a 
table reference with a states table. Let me show you how we can do that. And for that, I'm using a task, which is a function. Then you can schedule the best day and time to run, which is recommended for database management executions, such as this one that I'm doing right now. And the first two steps is to query and return all the records from the cities table and from the states table. And now we're going to loop through all the records in the CDS table. We're going to add a function that is called find first element that you can find here under data manipulation, array, find first element. As the name suggests, is going to find the first element in a list. So basically it's going to loop through this list. And as this is inside a loop, uh, just bear in mind that we have each item of the CDs table is returning as item. So we need each item of the states table to return as well. And that's how we do this. Each item of the states table that is going to be used here in this function is returning as a dollar sign this dot state underscore name. So what we can read here is basically cd dot state underscore name equals state dot state underscore name. And what's returning is the state, the whole record. And we just want the ID for the table reference. So here in this edit record, first is very important to understand here that to loop through all the records uh, from um, this list that's iterating through this series list, we just have to use item.id. And here in the states ID, which is the table reference column, I'm going to return this state variable dot ID because we just don't want the whole record. We just want the ID. So if we run, let's check our table. So let's refresh. Okay. So now we have all the relationships already created. Good. And what if I want a list of table reference instead of single table reference? And for that, we're going to use the states table. So we're going to make the reference to the CDs table because we're going to store all the CDs for each corresponding state. And it's very important to change here to a list. Mm hmm. Uh, already, I have already done that here. So I'm going to use the one I created. Good. So let's take a look how we do that in the task. So similar to what we did before, the first two steps is returning all the records in the states table and also all the records in the CDs table. Uh, just it's important to note that if you have very long tables, you might need to use pagination to run these flows that we're doing right now. And now we're going to loop through the records in the states table. And now we're just making a small change because in the other one, we had find the first element because it was a single, uh, app because the other one we use array find first element because we are dealing with a single values. And now we're using array find all elements because we want this list and relation array find, find all elements. And the settings here are basically the same. But uh, the other one, we were in, and you are looking through the cities. Now we're looking through the states. And for this function inside here, we're using cities because what's going to return is multiple cities of that state. And after that, we're going to push the variable cities, all of them, to this US cities ID, which is a table reference as a list. So let's go ahead and run. Let's take a look at our table. Refresh, and here we go. So we have those values for New York, California. Good. So the next data transformation that we're going to do is to change this latitude and longitude fields that are text into a geography field. 
So I can come here and use geography point. I have already done it. So I'm going to pick this one and I named this geolocation. So again, we're going to be returning all the records in the city stable, loop through them. But now we're going to create a variable because we want a specific type of JSON to be stored in that field. This JSON can be found here in our documentation, but you can also find here in the description of the video. Now that you grabbed from our documentation or from the description of the video, that JSON, you can create a variable. You can just paste it with filters and save. And now we're going to need to provide the longitude and the latitude values. And this is in the item. So item, longitude, and here, item, latitude. Good. I already have one here, so we don't need this for now. But let me show you what it looks like. So we have this. We have type point, and you have the longitude and latitude values. So we can just uh, store this JSON in that geography field, which is what we're doing here. It's returning as geo object. And as usual, we're using item.id to manipulate all the, the records in that list. So let's run. Let's hit refresh. Okay. First one is New York, then Los Angeles. So let's, let's take a look. So this is a New York. The second one on Los Angeles. Good. It's working. And the next transformation is when you have an array as an object, as in this case over here. Here we have the zip codes, but you can see that they're all stored as text. So what we can do is store as text or integer, but we have to modify to a list. I have already done one over here that I call zips array. Okay, so let me show how we do it. So as usual, we're going to query our records in the CDs table, look through them. Now we're creating a variable with a different uh, values here. So we're getting item.zips. This is the zips column over here. And we're applying a filter called split, which basically it splits the values of a text into a list or array. And the key part here is the separator. In my case here, the separator is a space. Uh, you may have a comma or semicolon, um, whatever separator you may have, but for me, it's just a space. So the separator that I'm using here is a space. Good. So let me show you what this zips underscore array variable is returning. So, okay, it's returning the list that we want. So let's push this into the edit record. So we have this zip underscore array column that I created there. Run, refresh, and that's great. We have now this list. And the next transformation is when we have an object as a text. So we have here some key value pairs, some as county name, population, time zone, but we want to store as a natural object like this. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how you can turn this into this. So as usual, we are going to query all the records, look through them. We're going to now we create another kind of variable. We're going to get this object as text field. This one. You're going to apply a filter called JSON decode. So basically what it does, it transforms text into a valid JSON. So let me show you what it looks like. So now we have as a JSON. So let's uh, go ahead and store this value in this object from text field, which is this one, object from text. Here, item ID as usual, run. Good. So 
we can have all of them as an object. So what if we have a list of objects and you want to actually store as an object array? So to do that, we're going to use the states table now. And to simulate an object array as text, so uh, here we have in the states table all the counties, population, and time zones for each state. So what we want now is to have this text value as this object that we can have many of them. So let's see how we do it. So we're going to start by querying all the records in the state table. Then we're going to loop through them. We create a variable with this value, item dot object array text, which is this column over here. And as we did before, we're going to apply the JSON decode filter. And then we're going to store this variable model here to our object array, which is this field over here. But before, let me show you what this variable looks like. Okay, we can have a valid JSON. That's awesome. Let's run. Let's get here. And here we go. Cool. If you have any additional questions, don't forget to leave it here in the comments below. To learn more about our tool, you can subscribe to our channel or visit our awesome community. And if you're blocked, feel free to reach out to live support chat within the platform. And I see you in the next video.